They set up false witnesses who said, this man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. Jezebelic spirit. Jezebelic spirit is an old spirit. It doesn't have to be a woman. It could be a man who is functioning in the Jezebelic spirit that will set up false witnesses and say, I heard him preach this. I heard him say that. I heard him. There is a grace on Stephen to bless them, deliver them, set them free, take them, elevate their life, break the bondages. But that demon is also fighting them. That demon is also what? Fighting them. That demon is also 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 saying, I don't want him to accept Stephen because if he accepts Stephen, then Stephen is going to kick me out. So that spirit, that demon is going to make sure you hate Stephen. Because the enemy knows if you accept him, then you accept your deliverance. Then you accept his breakthrough. Then you accept the future of your children. Then you accept the blessings that is supposed to come into your hands. Look, they are now going after something that is sentimental to people. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered us. They're saying that this guy is warring against a culture. There is always the enemy that will make you fight race against race. Race against, ah, why are you going to that church? Hey, all our people are here. Why are you going there? As soon as you hear that, you should hear the voice of the devil. When Peter was speaking, Peter thought it was his idea, his great idea. Peter, Peter was speaking, Peter was thinking, but it was not Peter, it was Satan speaking through Peter. So when somebody comes to you with race topics, racial divisions, color, oh, it's from the pit of hell, it's from the pit of hell. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, only thing that matters is whether you're known in heaven and feared in hell. Remember that. Always remember that. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have on a thermometer. I serve a Jesus who was so drawn to that woman who gave that two cents, that two shekels, everything that she had. For he, he said he was watching their offering. It is not about the amount. It is about your heart. So it's not about money. It's not about what? It's about how much have you made Jesus smile? How much did Jesus smile? Okay, you gave, me, gave that big amount of offering. But was Jesus smiling? Because there are some other people that gave even one-tenth of that amount. And Jesus was so moved. And you're giving 10 times more and Jesus is not moved. Something is wrong, my brother. Jesus is not moved by the number. He's watching your heart. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at if... It's not about the four loaves you gave. He's looking at that one loaf of bread that you refuse to part with. One more time. It's not about the four loaves that you sacrificially gave. He's looking at that one loaf that you hid behind. Yeah. The reason why the bread multiplied was that the little boy gave his entire lunch and said, I don't care. I just get to be with Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yes. Some people are so proud about the four things that you gave, but God is still looking at your other hand. That one thing that you've not given up. That cigarette that you still haven't given up. That habit that you still haven't given up. That alcohol that you, you keep going back to. That addiction, that pornography, that things that quench the heart of God. It's not about the four loaves that you gave. It's about the one that you haven't given up. 
I can tell you that this is what the Lord is doing. He's bringing us to a place where we surrender everything. Amen. The crumbs, the crumbs, the crumbs. He's telling you, deal with the crumbs. Deal with the what? The crumbs. Child of God, deal with the crumbs. They started hijacking Stephen by pitching him now against the customs. Because you see, some people didn't care about the words that he was saying. But the moment they started saying, oh, he's fighting the customs. Hey, come on. I don't care about what you preached, but now you are attacking our customs. Satan knows how to turn people against the anointing. They know what to say to cause them to turn against. May your eyes be open in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at the response of an anointed man of God. Verse 15. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. <laughs> this is going to be your story. I assure you, that's why I'm smiling because I know this is going to be your story in the days to come. The enemy is going to do a lot against you, but there is something that your face is going to not fade out. Your smile will not be lost. Your countenance will not be fallen because you're going from glory to glory. I want you to repeat after me. I don't have time for my countenance to be fallen because I'm going from glory to glory. Louder, I'm going from glory to glory. What causes a man to be surrounded by hurtful people? He did nothing to them. In fact, they're not even fighting because they, he did nothing to them or did something for them. He was serving an entirely different group of people. Yet these guys felt obligated to fight him. Imagine that. They weren't even in his church. <laughs> uh, his church people don't have a problem. But the people that are outside are the ones that have a problem with him. What did he do to you? He's not even preaching into your ears. I understand if he was screaming into your house. But he wasn't. Look at Stephen. His face is speaking a different language. Now he's about to tackle them. He's about to speak wisdom. Go to the next chapter, please. Abraham. Okay. He starts, <laughs> Stephen says, you want, you want to know what the issue is? Let's go. You want answers? Let's go. But I'm telling you one thing. People who hate you don't care about your answers. Those who want to hate you will hate you. Those who want to love you will, will love you. Amen. So here's Stephen. He's now trying to explain to them. He starts, starts right with Abraham. Let me, let me go down and show you where he jumps. Okay, go to verse 8. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac. And then he goes to Jacob. Verse 9, he talks about Joseph. Hmm. And he said, sold him into Egypt, but God was with him. And then he talks about, he goes to verse 16, uh, where Jacob was carried from Egypt and goes on, goes on, verse 17. But as the time of promise drawn near, which God had granted Abraham, the people increased multi and multiplied in Egypt. Then he's talking about what happened in Egypt, the slavery in Egypt. Then how, verse 23, when he was, Moses was 40 years old, he came to his heart to visit his brothers. Man, the guy went into his history. History. And then he goes on. Moses fled and became an exile where he became a father of two sons. Verse 30. Now when 40 years had passed. King James Version says, Now when 40 years had expired, an angel appeared to him. 
he goes on describing what happens to Moses verse 35 okay now he starts getting into the core issue of their problem core issue somebody say core issues ah when you see drama on the surface remember <laughs> there is a core issue don't listen to the drama there is a issue beneath the issue somebody say issue beneath the issue yeah yeah, yeah. was 35 this moses whom they rejected saying who made you a ruler and a judge who made you a listen every revival is listening to me listen now you will always have people asking you who anointed you who made you the ruler who made you the judge they all want to know who qualifies you and you know what's the craziest thing <laughs> when elijah was anointed nobody was seeing it they it was not caught on cameras when moses was anointed there was no witnesses hey there's nobody that said oh, no 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 it's true a bush talked no 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 i i'm a witness brother no 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 actually the, there was a voice that came out of the bush are you understanding what i'm saying there was no witnesses because anointing falls because of what you do in the private Amen. transfer of grace happens in the private your breakthrough happens in the private the results are seen in the public and the results are always challenged in the public so why are you shocked why are you shocked don't focus on the public focus on what you do in the private child of god what you did in the last season in your private life is what has brought your success in the public life the success you are right now seeing in your public life is a result of what you did in the last season in your private life Amen. your last season's private life has determined this season's public life and the lord who has begun a good work is about to complete it in jesus name Amen. and he said this man god sent us both ruler and redeemer by the hand of an angel remember there's so much wisdom here okay moses was both ruler and redeemer but people don't like that combination they don't like the ruler part they want a redeemer but they don't like the ruler they want a humble man of god a humble man of god will call you on all your birthdays humble man of god will come for all your birthday parties humble man of god that will come even help you change your kids diaper <laughs> oh you are so humble no he was both a ruler <laughs> he's both a ruler and a redeemer that combination is what christians don't like that combination is what christians don't like because they keep saying jesus came on a donkey Jesus came on a donkey. Jesus came on a donkey. Jesus came on a donkey. Jesus came on a donkey so you won't be a donkey. Yes. So that you don't ride a donkey. So that you can be blessed. So you can govern. So that you can be the extension of his kingdom. Jesus became poor so you can be rich. That's not what I said. That's what the Bible says. But we don't like these verses. Okay. he's now exposing their issue he was both not just a redeemer he was a ruler tough guy principles that you have to follow him you may not like it but he is sent by god are you understanding what i'm saying you may not like it but he's still sent by god you may not like it but he's still called to be a blessing to you the bible says verse 39 our fathers refused to obey him but trust him aside and in their hearts they turn to egypt ai mandoro mozanta 
I'm, I'm, I'm reading this so that you may not make the same mistake. What is it about a group of people that where God set them free from limitations in their life? God set them free from slavery. God used a man to bring them out of Egypt. But the Bible is saying they thrust him aside. And in their hearts they turned to Egypt. They didn't go physically. But in their hearts they went back. In their hearts they turned to Egypt. There is a sin nature in you that resists the anointed one. Locate that. And then he goes to verse 44. Our fathers had the tent of witnesses in the wilderness just as he who spoke to Moses directed to make it. Verse 45, he's saying they saw the tent of meeting where God spoke. Verse 45, our fathers in turn brought it in with Joshua. So now he's bringing him to Joshua. So it was until the king, days of David. Now he, they, he's talking about David. Verse 46, who found favor in the sight of God and asked to find the dwelling place for God of Jacob. Okay, he's bringing them to speed. Verse 47, but it was Solomon who built a house for it. Now everything is about to get escalated in a second. Are you still with me? Okay, he's bringing full history from Abraham to Solomon. And then he says, yet the Most High does not dwell in the house made my, by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You ready? Then he shifts gear. After you read this verse, you have to be thankful for your pastor. Because I'm not this tough on him. Okay? Verse 51. You stiff-necked people. I didn't say that. I wasn't calling you. <laughs> you stiff. I uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Brother, I don't know which Bible college you learned. <laughs> this is not de-escalation. They already there. They want to kill you. I don't know what you are about to do here. Verse 52. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? He's saying, you think you have a problem with me? You think I, your issue is only with me? He's saying, which of the prophets that you and your fathers have not persecuted? Tell me one pastor that came and they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You see, Stephen already sees that these guys have come to betray him and murder him. So he's saying that even the Messiah, you did the same thing to him. And your fathers did that all the way from the beginning. Did that to every prophet. It is a demonic spirit that eats up churches. You are not a peace breaker. You are a peacemaker. You received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Guess what? There was never a time an angel brought law. But he says angels brought it. Because the sent ones, the Bible calls them as angels. Ah, you don't like their perfume, but they're still angels. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't like their preaching, but they're still angels. God sees them as angels. And you stoned them. And you stoned them. You persecuted them. The moment truth bombs were dropped, Every demon inside them that caused them and their fathers to do that, took over them. And the Bible says, now when they heard these things, they were enraged. <laughs> now listen to that. Please tell me what behavior this is. And they ground their teeth at him. Who grinds the teeth? Is that a human behavior? 
Is that a is that a normal behavior or is that is that some loose nut somewhere? Yeah, because a demon started manifesting. You see, this is the problem. When many people fight in the house of God, they don't know demons are speaking through them. They don't know demons have already taken over them. It is not a human behavior what is happening. Church is one place. When you seek the Lord the way you're supposed to seek that place can release so much blessings on you your children and your children sometimes your children may not even seek the lord properly but because of a papa that fears god because of a mama that loves god god will keep on wrestling with the children and the children's children and keep on bringing them to his path there is a grace a church can bring Anybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But here's the thing. That same church that God uses to bless you can also become the church that now permanently you're cursed by God. Permanently doors are shut. Permanently doors have been shut not just for you. If it was just you, it would have been okay. but when the curse comes it doesn't just come on you it just comes on your kids and your children's children and your children's children may the lord give you the grace yes we have to be taught this so that the enemy cannot hijack your mind hijack your heart and you think you're doing the will of god all the while you're just digging your own grave Don't we have enough problems by ourselves? Okay? Do you need more from God? Don't you have enough demons fighting you? Don't you have enough demons from your family fighting you? <laughs> Don't you have enough demons from your country fighting you? We have enough demons fighting us without doing nothing. Generational demon. Demons that are fighting your blood. And now <laughs> <laughs> on top of all that you go to a church and you you start being hijacked by the devil and you create divisions and you create hate and you add to that curse that is not your portion you are called to be a gatherer of wood and you are called to light that wood on fire you are not here to quench the fire you are here to make the fire greater so forgive your brother quickly forgive your sister quickly forgive love one another quickly deeply hey people will do things to offend you every church has like a four or five of them here and there they are the ones that god has kept to make sure that you're growing in character are you understanding you cannot avoid them you cannot avoid them you will not be able to run away from them some in the every group you join there is at least one <laughs> yeah yeah so you have to protect your heart you have to guard your heart you have to say but i am different i am the salt of the earth I am the salt of the earth. <laughs> Say it out loud, I am the salt of the earth. Yes. That salt is what makes the entire curry flavorable. A little too much of that? You can't eat that. Little too less? You can't enjoy it. You are a salt. You need to know when your presence is too much. You need to know when to keep quiet. Hey, Everybody is talking, I want to be heard. Hey, salt, take it easy. <laughs> The salt, don't, 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 don't sprinkle yourself too much. Uh, are you understanding what I'm saying? Your spiritual maturity has to be seen everywhere. I can assure you, Stephen is not being ignorant now. He's not being an ignorant believer. He is asking for death. I can guarantee you, When you study Stephen you will understand the man is not being an 
ignorant preacher and he's just so passionate and he started preaching and then realized bro this is going nowhere they're still going to kill me no 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 he wanted to die because he was seeing someone his eyes had made contact with someone and he has been desiring to be in the presence of that someone and he said you know what i just bought myself a ticket the, fast, the fastest way to get to heaven is to tell believers truth they will give you a one way ticket to heaven something that was already going on in his spirit you got to understand it was not after this that he began to see jesus the bible says before when they called him they noticed that his face was glowing like an angel and i'll tell you how i'll tell you how you ready we're getting to the best part now all this to come to this verse and we are here blessed be the name of the lord Hello, hello, greetings to you. We are so glad to meet you through this God TV program. I'm sure the word of God has been fire in your bones. Now allow this fire to carry you to places and fulfill all the God-given assignments in your life. Thank you for following us and partnering with us. Every seed that you send is a blessing to us. May God remember your giving and richly bless you. Much love, Shalom. Distance is not a barrier to God. Revivenations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 